we know about organic compounds is that they're carbon containing compounds and they're more complicated they have a lot more atoms but there's a lot less variety than inorganic compounds because the atoms are generally carbon hydrogen and then some other atoms like nitrogen and oxygen that we've seen in these functional groups those are important functional groups that impart a function on the rest of the molecule that would normally just be non-reactive or only have combustion reactions, which we know is not what exists in living organisms that are run by organic compounds. We have a carbon-based life because carbon can bond in many different ways. So in drawing the structures, carbon has four bonds, oxygen has two bonds, nitrogen has three bonds, and hydrogen always has one bond. In searching for life of other forms in the universe. It might not be carbon-based, but of all the elements on the periodic table, carbon is the one atom that can bond in so many different ways with single, double, or triple bonds and bonds to itself or to other atoms. So it's most likely that of all the 118 known elements on the periodic table, any other forms of life in the universe would also be carbon-based because these are all the elements we have in the entire universe. The most common occurrence you'll see the evidence of organic compounds are in products that have these scents and smells like shampoo. The names of organic compounds, though seemingly long and maybe even, is it toxic? Well, we know now that it's just putting together parts of the structure to form the long name. So it's focusing on the name ending, which indicates the functional group, which is the most important part from the perspective of a reaction. So you can now look at these ingredients and see Hmm, maybe some of these aren't so foreign, or maybe they're basically just organic compounds. So the first ingredient is water, and then the second is sodium laureth sulfate. Though you might not know what laureth is, sodium you definitely know, element on the periodic table, and sulfate also you know is the polyatomic ion, SO4-2. This next one, cocobetaine, you might not know anything about the cocobeta, but focusing on the name ending INE, that INE means that there must be the amine group, the amine functional group as part of this structure. Continuing on, there's glycerin and then glycol disterate, focusing on the name ending ATE. The ATE means that the ester functional group is present. And esters are common because they have good smells. So this isn't any kind of dangerous or toxic compound. It's just an organic compound with a long name with those different parts of the molecule. And then focusing on the name ending will tell you the functional group. Here's another shampoo, and again, you can focus on the ingredients and try to understand what's in there. Uh, so there's water, and then again, that's sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, then there's also ammonium lauryl sulfate. So this ammonium is on the polyatomic ions list. Uh, lauryl, you might not need to know, but sulfate is also on the polyatomic ions list. So in the fragrances, this one is propylene glycol. Because of the OL name ending, that means that there's an alcohol functional group. Okay, um, You might also recognize this prop prefix, which means there's three carbons in there. The comparison here of these two shampoos is that this is lush, which promises only natural ingredients. But those natural ingredients, what they've listed is the natural names like fresh pineapple juice, and that's the biological name of the pineapple. Um, but what you have in a shampoo that's more commercial, these are compounds that are made in a lab that are mimicking the natural compounds like the fresh pineapple juice. But they're putting in the chemical names um, with those proper IUPAC name endings. So there's nothing ne necessarily more safe or less safe about either. It's just how the names are written, either using the biology names or, in this case, the chemistry names, the IUPAC names of organic compounds.